Hey guys, I'm Aaron Gorman from the channel Irish in Finland and today me and Antti are going to tell you guys the story of an Irish vampire. Every country has its legends of terror and one of the most common and persistent of these legends found worldwide is that of the vampire. A vampire is someone who has died but who returns to the world in order to feed on the warm vital blood of the living. After Irish writer Bram Stoker produced his novel Dracula in 1897, the world came to associate the vampire legend with the Romanian province of Transylvania. Likewise, it is supposed by many that the anti-hero of the book Dracula was actually an aristocrat who came from that particular area. He was rather fond of bringing his many victims to a gory end. However, Mr Stoker may have received his inspiration from closer to home. Like most countries in Europe, Ireland also has its tales of the undead, or as they are known in Irish, Nanev Marv. One such story well known throughout Ireland at that time was based in County Derry, in the townland of Slack Taverty. Many years ago, there lived in the lands east of the Foyle between Dungiven and Garva in Ireland, a chieftain or petty king called Avertok. His name implies that he was small or a dwarf. It may be that he had been injured in battle through accident or possibly because of wizardry. For the people of his time were great warriors and they liked their rulers to be manly, brave and strong. However, this is conjecture and all we know of him is that he was quite an evil man, a wizard even, hated and feared by his own clan and neighboring clans. Avertok was also a jealous man and suspected that his wife was having an affair, so he decided to spy on her. He climbed out the window one night of his castle in an effort to catch her in the act, but he slipped and fell to his death. His body was discovered in the morning by the townspeople. They were all relieved that he was gone quickly, so they buried him standing upright as befitting his status as a cruel clan leader. But they were in for a shock, the very next day, Abertok appeared demanding bowls of his people's blood, fresh from cuts on their wrists. Some of these clan's people complied with him. The others ran to a neighbouring chieftain called Kathan and begged him to deliver them from the evil Abertok. Kathan agreed to do this for the people, so he waited for Abertok and slew him, after which he buried him again. But there is no keeping a good vampire down. And so the very next day, there was Abertok demanding empty bowls filled with fresh blood from his clan's people. Cathan was incensed with rage. He once again slew the evil creature and again and buried him in a remote grave. Again, the next morning, there was the blood drinker demanding his bowls of blood. In total bewilderment, Cathan could only turn to the local saint, Owen, for help. Owen listened to the sorry tale and deliberated and prayed about the situation. His advice to Cathan was that Abertok was already dead, so he cannot be killed again. The only way to stop him was to pierce his heart with a sword made from a yew tree, put him into the ground upside down and cover him with ash branches and thorns. When this is done, also place a heavy stone slab over the grave, which he could never rise from. Averdak would never, ever come back for his bloody breakfast. Cotton followed this saint's advice, and he impaled him, and done exactly what the saint had told him to do. To this very day, Abertok lies beneath his slab stone. In the Irish language, this particular place is called Liacht Abertok. Thank you very much for watching this video guys and don't forget to press subscribe on Andy's channel. Also, don't forget to catch part two on my channel, Irish in Finland, where we're just going to explore the story, the facts and the fictions surrounding this particular legend. Thank you very much for watching.